Hi right, again guys, this is FD465.tv once more back with another video and today we are going to look at one project that is part of our 2K to 100K challenge and that project is Kilt Protocol Network. We haven't opened the position yet for Kilt Protocol. For transparency, I do hold Kilt as part of my private portfolio and we are going to dive in using this DYOR risk evaluation as usual for any project that is part of our 2K to 100K challenge. If you want to know more about what our 2K to 100K portfolio challenge is, please watch our previous videos. I'll leave the links down below. So what is Kilt Protocol Network? Well, it is a blockchain identity protocol for issuing self-sovereign, anonymous, verifiable credentials and decentralized identifiers and is built in substrate on the Polkadot network. Originally, it launched on the Kusama network and Kilt Protocol recently self-sponsored the parachain auction slot on Polkadot and will be migrating from Kusama, Polkadot, to Scanary network. I will cover the reasons why Kilt Protocol Network is moving from Kusama to Polkadot Network in a different video, please check the links in the description. Developed by Botlabs, a Berlin-based company, Kilt Protocol is approximately 24 team members. In line with the project's original ethos, Kilt Protocol Network will keep just one blockchain and one coin that will be migrating from the Kusama Network over to Polkadot, to the new parachain on Polkadot. On top of that, here are some of the attributes that are not going to be changing when the migration happens. All Kilt coin balances, including vesting, will remain the same. All addresses will remain the same. All attestations and credentials will remain unchanged. Decentralized identifiers will also remain unchanged. Web names will remain the same. There will be no change. What is Kilt Protocol's value proposition? Well, Kilt is a protocol for self-sovereign data and interoperability built on top of the permissionless Kilt blockchain. Kilt is a digital identity protocol for generating and managing decentralized identifiers or DIDs, DID, DIDS for plural. It is also used for issuing and presenting digital verifiable credentials for V. Don't confuse this with venture capital. This is verifiable credential. VC. It is also a universal identity protocol for individuals, organizations, objects, and intelligence agency to obtain credentials for arbitrary attributes about themselves issued by trusted attestors. Self-sovereign mechanism for putting credential holders in control of their own data. A trust market for attestors for such credentials. So there is going to be some kind of marketplace for attestors for such credentials. In contrast to other centralized alternatives, Kilt features self-sovereign data as well as the revocable credentials anchored to the Kilt blockchain. Now to some tokenomics for Kilt. Ticker symbol Kilt, K-I-L-T. Total coins is 290 million. Tokens issued at project launch, 150 million Kilt. Circulating supply, 49.4 million Kilt. Initial circulating supply, 34 million. So the difference between the initial circulating supply and the circulating supply is the initial circulating supply is when the project launched. The circulating supply is the circulating supply at the point at which we are shooting this video. So that is the difference there. Okay. The Kilt coin distribution community, 100 million Kilt. The team was allocated 50 million Kilt. Now on to some token use cases. The Kilt coin is used to pay attestors who provide attestation services. The Kilt coin is also used to anchor credentials, trust hierarchies, DIDs or decentralized identifiers and C types. Settling on-chain transaction fees. Holders of the Kilt coin can also participate in on-chain governance voting to inform the direction of the protocol. If you are holding the Kilt coin, you also can stake the coins to help secure the network. Network collators and delegators are incentivized via the Kilt coin rewards using staking. Infrastructural use cases include the use of the Sporan wallet. From within the Sporan wallet, users can create a digital identity using the Kilt blockchain. You can also display Kilt coin balances, sign and send transactions. There is also the creation of a decentralized identifier and anchor it on the Kilt blockchain. Users can also add service endpoints to their decentralized identifiers. One can also create a web name and link it to all their decentralized identifiers or sign documents or any other data with their decentralized identifier or DATID. You can also sign Kilt transactions created by Polkadot applications. Then there is that part where someone can receive, store, manage, and present their digital credentials. So there is quite a lot in terms of infrastructure use cases. And then there is the decentralized identifier signatures themselves or did sign. This ensures that users keep their private information confidential. There is also the an 
enhancement of security of users' private information as no data is ever exchanged. Digital files signed using the DIT sign or decentralized identifier signature can be shared in a variety of ways, including emails, via Telegram, WhatsApp. You can even put them on memory stick and they'll still be valid, and many, many more. There is also social KYC or social know your customer. Here, users can decide who has access to their digital data. No data is stored, shared, or sold after attestation. All data disappears straight after attestation. Web3 names are also used by users and can be linked to all social media accounts to just one web name used across various platforms. That would be godsend. You don't know how many usernames you've got to use on different networks because the one you want to use on that network might be taken. So if you have one that you sign using your Spawn wallet and it's a Web3 name, we think that would be great. Then we go on to decentralization. Killed protocol network offers permissionless decentralized identifiers or deeds and the protocol itself is hosted on Polkadot, a decentralized layer zero network. The attestation process is also decentralized in comparison to Web2 attestations. On to security, killed benefits from the shared or pooled security that is offered by Polkadot's relay chain, a feature that benefits all projects that are onboarded as parachains on the Polkadot network. In addition, the killed code base was also audited by SR Labs and eight issues were raised and successfully resolved. So, so far, security should be good to go. On scaling, using Polkadot's architecture, which separates the security layer from the execution layer, scaling to reasonable speeds is not going to be an issue for killed protocol. And the sheer amount of integration that have taken place to date indicate that handling high traffic volumes is not something to worry about at the present moment because it looks like the capacity is there to handle such traffic. The integration with on finality, a leading blockchain infrastructure as a service platform is providing scalable RPC or remote procedure calls, RPC services to kill protocol from the first block. On finality's globally distributed API service provides reliable and scalable endpoints for developer applications. Kill's global community can now benefit from high performance RPC chip nodes when they build decentralized verifiable credentials on Kill network. When it comes to interoperability, the Polkadot kind of network is built for interoperability and one of its signature technologies, that is the cross-consensus messaging or XCM, facilitates multi-chain communication with other parachain. In addition, bringing all your social media channels under the same name brings a different kind of interoperability where a single username could be used across a swathe social media platform. I think this will actually end up being one of the fundamental benefits of using Kill Network, putting all your social media platforms under just one Web3 name. I think that would be epic. That would be massive. If you want to know, we covered Kill Protocol's switch from Kusama Network to Polkadot. I'll leave a link to the video down below. Check it out. It's got some proper alpha as well. When it comes to social media presence, Kill Protocol has got 70,800 Twitter followers and 3,400 Discord members. So there is kind of a massive mismatch there. For more on Kill Protocol integrations, please follow the links to our previous video on Kill Network updates. Now let's go on to the DYO, our risk evaluation that we are going to apply here. We are going to apply 13 elements and the 13 elements are going to apply as follows. Uh, decentralization, security, scaling, interoperability, project team. Then we consider social media presence via Twitter and via Discord. Then we also look into use cases, real world use cases. And from time to time, we may split them between token use cases and what we consider to be infrastructure use cases. Then we look at the total tokens issued at project launch, total tokens in circulation at the point at which we are carrying out this video or performing this video or shooting this video. And then we consider maximum tokens available and finally tokens under the control of insider. So what scores did we give to killed protocol? The scores will be between 0 to 10, 0 being the minimum and 10 being the maximum. Once we come up with a score, we then apply the risk levels, uh, which are no go, we go to 0, potential and go for it. And the categories for each of those risk levels as follows. A project which scores between 0 to 6 out of 130 falls within the no go category. For a project to fall under the could go to 0 category, a project must score between 65 to 89 points out of 130 and then within the potential category a project must score from 90 to 109 out of 130 and then finally the go for category a project must score between 110 and 130 out of 130 those are the risk levels and the score category now the scores we've allocated to killed protocol as follows on decentralization we gave it 5 points out of 10 on security 7 and a half points out of 10 on scaling 7 and a half points out of 10 interoperability 10 out of 10 because polkadot is designed for interoperability and killed protocol itself is brings a different kind of interoperability in the sense that you can use the same web3 name across all your social media platforms we think that's epic on project team we gave it seven and a half point out of ten on social media via twitter we gave it 
seven and a half points out of ten. Social media via Discord, two and a half points out of ten. Edge of the project, two and a half points out of ten. Uh, use cases, seven and a half points out of ten. We think it's got quite a reasonable basket of use cases that are actually solving real world problems. Tokens issued at project launch, two and a half points out of ten. Tokens in circulation at the point at which we are doing this video, two and a half points out of ten. Maximum tokens are viable, 290 million. So that's five points out of ten. And then inside a token allocation, it's about 17% or something of that sort, which is within our threshold. So we give them seven and a half points out of ten. Do you guys agree with our scores? Please comment down below and let us know. Once you're done there, guys, don't forget to click like and subscribe. It's only smash that notification bell. Now the aggregate score for Kilt Protocol comes to a massive 75 points out of 130. This puts Kilt Protocol within the company of Ethereum, Cosmos, Avalanche, and many others. What do you guys think? Do you think Kilt is good potential? Do you think it will have the strength to stay within that category? Or do you think it's actually made for categories higher than the could go to zero category, which is 65 to 89 points out of 130? Comments down below and let us know. As far as you are concerned, we think Kilt Protocol actually is a project that is designed for the real world and it's solving some real world problems. If you can sign your documents or authenticate them electronically without submitting them to anybody, and as soon as you log out of your wallet, those documents or you leave the attestation platform, the documents disappear. That ensures privacy and confidence. Digitality. So we support that and we vote for that. So Kill Protocol, I think is going to be with us for a long time to come. And if any project is going to survive the current bear market, Kill Protocol, I believe it's going to come back for the next bull run. What do you guys think? Do you think it's time to add Kill Protocol to our 2K to 100K challenge? I already hold it in my private portfolio. The next move then is to add it to our 2K to 100K portfolio, which will be sometime soon. Follow us on Twitter to know exactly when we make the move. Until next time, guys, this is FD for Sage5.t with your update on our 2k to 100k challenge until next time bye for now